All right, in this live training, I want to show you briefly how we can capture the output of ProPresenter to be either recorded to your hard drive or even streamed to the web using some settings that we'll adjust right here in ProPresenter. So let's take a quick look. Over here to the right, and actually let me see if I can zoom right in, um, in the top right we have this Live button. Now just clicking it doesn't make things go live, but let's go ahead and select it, and we have an option to either start a capture or look at our capture settings. Um, within our capture settings, we can see that it is expected to capture our first screen, which is our audience screen. We can select this and choose either our stage screen or in the case of um, the way that we have our um, pro presenter set up, with our preview showing a double screen. Uh, you could capture that if you wanted to, uh, but for this particular case, we're gonna capture our audience screen. Now we have a destination option. RTMP is a streaming protocol. You could use this like with YouTube and many other streaming services. And so if you wanted to, you could make a selection there. Resi is a, um, a particular format. It's a company who does um, streaming using a resilient streaming protocol. Uh, Resi is a little bit more reliable on the end of like um, uh, transmitting over poor broadband. Um, however, there is uh, there's a little bit more expense for Resi, and also the side effect of having a delay in how quickly your audience can receive the stream. Resi may have a minute or two of buffer. And then finally, you can capture to disk. So instead of streaming out, you could actually capture right on the disk. So let's go back to the settings for RTMP. Um, if you were to stream to YouTube, for example, you can go to your YouTube account. Um, and in the YouTube studio, you can find your streaming address and an encode key, which you can grab. These are secret items for your specific account. But it would make it possible for you to send um, your stuff directly to your YouTube page. Under encoding, you have different qualities of your encoding. This will affect how um, how good the image is, how good the, the audio is, whether it's jumpy or smooth. Um, the more quality you put in there, the more bandwidth you're going to have to have for that stream. Uh, so use something that's um, it works for your site and certainly practice in advance to make sure that when you have an event that requires a live stream, uh, you're not using too much bandwidth for your capabilities. Uh, finally, you can choose to save a local copy of that stream uh, to your computer. And we have custom routing for the audio if you needed to. You can bring in many channels. I've even had a soundboard that uh, sent in um, up to 48 channels of audio into ProPresenter. Um, using the routing options, you can select which of those channels get routed out to your stream or to your recording. So take a look back in here at destination. We could also choose disk. Um, if we choose the disk, it's going to actually save the item to a particular folder on our computer. So we could choose our desktop, for example, to save a video. We can choose what codec we want the video to be recorded in. Uh, the different codecs actually have different implications on how you can use these within an editor or whether you can use them um, in combination with other applications. So use a codec that works best for your application. You can choose what resolution we want to stream or record to. We have that here. Uh, your frame rate as well. These are all pretty straightforward as well as your routing. Once you've selected all the items that you like, you can hit the Start Capture button here, or I can show you how we will do that in a different way um, in just a moment. Under Destination, if we looked at Resi, it will ask you to log in with your Resi account. Um, certainly take a look at that if it would work for your particular application. Uh, we don't have Resi set up on this particular system right now, although we have used it in the past. Um, Resi is just not the one that we're going to use for this tutorial. If we go back to destination disk, it's going to put a video on my desktop. No big deal. That's exactly what we want. I'm going to go ahead and close capture settings. We'll come back up here. And now if we wanted to record the content that's coming out of ProPresenter from screen one, which would be this screen here, we can choose live and start capture. You can see up here in the top, it actually has a green box with a timer that's counting up to show us exactly uh, what we're expecting uh, from our uh, recording our stream, how long it's been going. If we hover over top of that, it gives us more information as well. So we can see um, the destination of our stream. We can see whether it's dropped any frames as a result of processing power or any kind of streaming behaviors. Um, and we also have the option to stop our capture. So we'll go ahead and stop that now. 
So in this case, I recorded 30 seconds of this little looping video, but had I been selecting other slides that we have prepared, um, those would have gone out to a video. And we can pick up that video on the desktop uh, of the computer. Um, and we could use it in an editor. You can upload it straight to a web service. You can archive it, uh, whatever you might need to do. But those are the streaming and capture settings within ProPresenter. Um, there's certainly more that you could dig into that, especially if you get into the Resi streaming. Uh, but we may be, be able to cover some of that in future training videos. Uh, so certainly check back uh, to catch more later.